Before we start, just a quick note, as I was recording this, I was 100% certain that I'd done a thoughts on season 1 of Good Omens, but I just checked and it turns out I had decided not to. But oh well, me doing random thoughts on of random seasons and then not following it up with later seasons is a thing, so why not do it the other way around? Okay, on to the video. Hello and welcome to my full spoiler thoughts on season 2 of Good Omens. I'm surprised my voice is so steady, I literally just finished watching it, like... A minute ago. I think it was this year, or at the very least the end of last year, when I read the book and then watched season one of A Show Good Omens, and at the time, I think, I didn't know they were doing a second season of a show, so I didn't have to wait four years like most people. I was surprised by this. And I managed to stay away from, apparently there were some major spoilers circulating on the internet beforehand, so luckily I managed to steer clear of those. But yeah, Good Omens! I love it! It's, um, I feel like this video isn't going to be very long because, uh, Good Omens is usually pretty light-hearted and um, it's a comedy uh, mostly and I feel like this season of a show wasn't quite as I don't want to say substantial um, it was just as enjoyable as season one don't get me wrong but it wasn't quite as like there weren't quite as many plot threads there weren't quite as many characters I feel like it felt more focused it felt smaller scale but in a good way most of all it felt like getting to spend more time with these characters who we really enjoy. Honestly, maybe it's just because I'm so close to season one of this show, but I felt like almost no time at all had passed between season one and season two. Like, it's not very often that you have that big of a time gap between two seasons of a show and the show still feels like the show, especially when you have an entirely new plot. I binge watched this, by the way. I was very lucky because I bought my sister a birthday present and I was offered a week of Amazon Prime for a quid and I took it because I try not to give Amazon money, but only Amazon had what I needed for the right price. And I've made heavy use of my one week of Prime benefits. My Prime <laughs> expires in three days and this came out today and I went, I'm going to fucking watch every episode of this. And if I sound a little, oh, it's because again, I watched the ending a few minutes ago. And you know what? Fuck you, Neil Gaiman. Oh, I was, <laughs> I was, I was watching the episode and I was about halfway through the final episode. I thought, you know what? Good Omens is nice because it's always got a happy ending. I mean, there's only two endings so far, but like, you know, season one had a happy ending, and the main plot that was uh, season two had a happy ending, but then it kept going, and pain. I am so pleased, again, this is full spoilers, okay, we've got that out of the way. I am so pleased that they actually decided to pursue the idea that there's more than, like, the stereotypical on-screen bromance when we're not going to do anything beyond bromance with these two characters. I wouldn't say that I personally shipped them or that I would have been mad had they not pursued this, but given what we just got, I am so glad they pursued it because it lends itself into further exploration of a dichotomy between these two characters. And also it's just really fucking good gay romance drama. <laughs> and it felt so real as well, just the, uh, like... I really liked Aziraphel until he said, I forgive you. I really liked his character up until that point. The second those words left his lips after the kiss, I was like, I hate you so much. I hate you so much. I also like how Aziraphel is kind of stereotypically portrayed as more camp uh, versus um, Crowley. And they had Crowley be the one to actually, like, you know, take the advice of mortals and actually, you know, try and put their feelings on the table. But man, the second, um, oh my god, I just binged this for six hours and I don't remember their names. As soon as Maggie and Nina sat down with Crowley and started talking about, like, look, you guys need to have this conversation and actually talk to each other about your feelings. I kind of, like, given that Aziraphel had already gone off to talk to the Metatron, I kind of already knew where it was going. I was like, no, don't you fucking do this to me. Although the exciting thing is that plot thread does leave us open for a very gay season three, and <laughs> disaster gay uh, Crowley is something, you know, I'm looking forward to watching. Don't don't at me. I was gonna say disaster bi- I don't know if disaster gay is a term, but disaster bisexual I see thrown around a lot. We don't know if Crowley's bisexual. I just wanna hug him. I forgive you. God, it's just such like, it's so- this show hasn't tackled anything to do with prejudice so far. A bit like with the Sandman, it was very good in just making a queer romance just normal, but the line, I forgive you, was so, like, it felt like it was coming from someone 
who viewed same-sex relationships as, like, something sinful. Like, they would never say it out loud, but in their core, because they were raised to believe that despite being gay themselves. Just those three words, I forgive you, that's what that's what I heard in those three words, and I think that's the intention, given that, obviously, this is meant to be talking about religion. And the Metatron did that shit on purpose. You saw the look he gave Crowley before he left. Sorry, I know that I'm here to give you my thoughts on an entire season, but I just can't get over that final scene. It was so well acted, and, and the music, and, and the emotions. Okay, okay, focus. I really liked how the stuff with Maggie and Nina didn't end up with them just being together. Like... The idea that these two external forces were trying to push these two characters together in service of their own plans and wishes felt kind of like if it had ended up with them just being together, then it, there wouldn't have been much of a story to tell in that regard. So it was a nice change of pace to instead of just being like, oh yeah, and then Maggie and Nina ended up together in the end, obviously, to be like, well, actually, human relationships are a bit more nuanced than that. And I'm, I'm glad that they showed that. I also enjoyed the unexpected romance between PLZ Bub and Gabriel. God, this show must make religious people so fucking angry. But that was sweet as well. And the whole plot behind Gabriel losing his memory and the kind of like doofus character that Jim was this entire season was pretty fun. I really enjoyed Muriel, the angel of a very low rank who is a very anxious bean and is trying to pass herself off as real human police. <laughs> Come to keep watch on a zero fail. She was cute. She was really fun. I wish someone had just told her she was doing a good job. I wish a zero fail or Crowley had just told her like, hey look, you don't you, you, you shouldn't wrap yourself worth up in what your bosses think about you. You, you're good. You're great. You're, you're, you're adorable. Shax was fun until I feel like in the last couple of episodes she was trying to do this like growly accent thing, which came off as a little. But you know we can we can live with some hammy acting. It's fine. I won't get into like every single intricacy. Um, what the hell is going on outside? Oh, some kids have stolen a shopping trolley. All right, have fun. Anyway, that that's going to be it for me. Um, Good Omens is gay now. Uh, deal, <laughs> deal with it. <laughs> no, I hope even people who don't consider themselves queer or have any kind of, like, you know, crossover with the quote-unquote queer world, although you probably do, um, I hope that you still understood the universal, like, romance, you know, storytelling that's going on here. Uh, I think that Good Omens and Sandman both are shows which do that really well. They're just like, you know, this is just a relationship and it's, you know, I do hope Good Omens Season 3 goes into some themes regarding religion and queerness, but um, as far as this season went, I hope it was still, like, relatable for everyone, you know? Anyway, Good Omens Season 2. Peace out. <laughs> That's how I end videos now. <laughs> Sorry, I had to be bisexual in this video and it's made me very self-aware.